145 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the concurrent resolution. House Concurrent Resolution 145, concurrent resolution calling for universal condemnation of the North Korean missile launch of December 12, 2012. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Ross Layton, and the gentleman from California, Mr. Berman, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. I thank the speaker. I ask that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend and to include extraneous material in the record on this bill. Without objection. I thank you, sir. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlewoman is recognized. I rise to support this strongly bipartisan measure which condemns the latest provocation by North Korea. Pyongyang has once again flagrantly violated past United Nations Security Council resolutions and the assurances given to six party partners. I would also like to take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to sincerely congratulate President-elect Park for her victory in South Korea's hard-fought presidential election. The Republic of Korea is one of our nation's closest friends in Asia. Ours is a steadfast alliance forged in the crucible of war. Two decades ago, with all eyes on Europe, the United States prematurely celebrated victory over communism and an end to the Cold War. But in 1989, the same year the Berlin Wall fell, tanks rolled into Tiananmen Square, crushing in a bloody massacre, the democracy movement of the Chinese people. So while communism fell in Europe, it was revitalized in the world's most populous nation and preserved in North Korea and in my native homeland of Cuba. Pyongyang's recent missile launch awakens America to the fact that the shadow of communism still casts a long shadow over Asia. North Korea's expanding nuclear and missile proliferation threaten not only our allies in the Pacific, but potentially our own people as well. In Asia, the Cold War never ended, and the United States and South Korean forces stand guard together on this last frontier. Attempts to engage Pyongyang over the past four years have been met with repeated provocations. The kidnapping of two American journalists, repeated missile launches, one more nuclear test, the sinking of a South Korean naval vessel with the loss of 46 lives, and the shelling of a South Korean island. How much more should we endure before we say enough is enough? Sweet talk in Pyongyang only seems to inspire further belligerence. Our extended hand is met only with a clenched fist, but a fist grasping a knife. Those who had hoped for openness and reform from this new generation of the Kim dynasty saw their dreams go up in smoke on a North Korea launch pad. The only answer appears to be a coordinated, firm, international strategy where current sanctions are reinforced and strengthened. This, of course, requires the cooperation of Beijing, a UN Security Council permanent member, who deceptively seems to tell one thing to Washington and yet another to Pyongyang. Press articles hailed the fact that China, in anticipation of the recent launch, had begun inspecting cargo on North Korean ships in search of contraband. The question this raises is, why has China not been inspecting North Korean ships since 2006, at, as first called for in a UN resolution which was reinforced by another resolution in the year 2009. If UN member states would only enforce the sanctions currently on the books, North Korea would be unable to ignore the international community and the civilized world. The time for coordinated international action is now. The time, in fact, is long overdue. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of our time. Gentlewoman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from California, Mr. Berman, is recognized. 